Hello everyone and welcome to Building Web Applications. My name is Steve Bishop from ProgrammingMadeEasy.com. Today, we're going to be talking about element attributes. So these are special attributes that can be added on an element to help provide the element some additional information it might need. So for example, here is a paragraph element and we've specified the name attribute. And we're assigning to the name attribute a value. And the value that we're assigning it is my paragraph. Now notice that an attribute is receiving the value and the value is inside of quotation marks. This is always what you want to do. You always want to wrap the value inside of quotation marks. And then of course, between the attribute name and the value is an equal sign. Another important thing to know about attributes is that they will always go in the opening tag. They'll never be viewed inside of the closing tag. So we have P and then the attribute name, and that's again in front of any sort of content. Let's take a look at how we can add some attributes to some of the different elements inside of our index.html file. So right now, our index.html file is kind of bland. If we just take a look at it in our browser and do a little refresh here, you can see strong content goes here, span content goes here. There's really nothing amazing about this. So what I'd like to do is to go ahead and add another element here that's going to, at first, just go ahead and give us a link to something like, oh, I don't know, Google, okay? So down below where it says span, I'm gonna go ahead and add an anchor tag. And it's just simply the A. And an anchor tag is how you can make a reference to some other web page or some other location on the web. Now, in order for the anchor tag to work, you have to utilize an attribute called the href. So this is an HTTP reference. And we're going to point this to, and remember, we need to use the equal sign to then say, I'm going to assign to this href attribute a value. And what comes after the equal sign is two quotation marks. So our value is always wrapped in quotation marks. Then we just need to specify what the reference is. Where is the actual page? And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and say a location out on the internet, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash Google.com. All right. Now, inside of my anchor tag, my between my open and close anchor tag, I can put some text that I want to appear that the user can click on. So I'm just going to say search. And if we save this, and if I go to my browser and refresh, you can see there is the search link. And you can even see if I hover the mouse over it down here towards the bottom, it will actually display the link that I'm pointing to. If I click on it, it's going to take my page over to Google. All right, great. Let's just go back here. Now, another uh, another element that I can add is an image. And quite frankly, I'd like to go ahead and see my image on here. So I'm going to add an image tag, which is just IMG. Now, an image requires a source. Where is the image located? And this could be a JPG. This could be a GIF. This could be a PNG. There's all sorts of different image types that you could display. But they all have to be referenced using the S R C attribute or source. So we're going to assign to the source attribute a location. And once again, I can use a location that's out on the internet. So I'm just going to grab the location of my GitHub avatar, which is just my image on GitHub. And oops, looks like we got rid of the quotation marks. Let me try that again. There we go. So once again, my value is going inside of these quotation marks. All right, now you might be thinking that what I have to do here is to do the closing angle bracket and then we gotta add the closing tag for uh, IMG, right? That might be what you think you gotta do. But with an image, it's a special kind of element. It's what we call a self-closing element. It's a self-closing tag, okay? I don't actually need this closing tag. And that's because if you think about an image, can you put in anything inside of an image like you can inside of an anchor tag or inside of a span or inside of strong? Can you put anything inside of an image? Not really. You already have the source uh, being a reference to some sort of image out on the internet. 
So there's nothing that can go inside of this. So we're just gonna drop the closing IMG tag. And instead, at the end of this opening tag, we're gonna do a forward slash before we do the closing angle bracket. So image source is pointing to this source and then the forward slash closing angle bracket. And this is what we call a self-closing tag. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. And now if we refresh our browser, all right, there's my image. Uh, looks a little big and we got some big space here. So the formatting is a little goofy. Let's see if we can fix that. I'm gonna go to above my span. I'm gonna add a special element called a div. And a div is just kind of a way of dividing your web page into different sections. And then I'm gonna move the span and the, a, the anchor tag up to this div. So we'll just put it there. So it's in its own special little section. We'll go ahead and save those changes, go back and once again refresh, and there we go. So now we have strong content goes here, span content goes here, we get the search link and my big ugly mug there. Speaking of which, it is kind of big. Can we shrink this down in some way? Absolutely, and we can use an attribute to do that. On our image element, let's go ahead and change the width. And we're gonna specify that the width is 200. And this value is actually gonna be 200 pixels. It's By default, it uh, renders it as pixels. So we're gonna change the width to 200 pixels. Let's go ahead and save that. And it will actually automatically resize to the 200 pixels in width. And it will also adjust the height to match the aspect ratio of the image. Okay, so just automatically adjust the height as well as the width, which is fantastic. So we've got uh, a much smaller, much nicer image that's showing up there. All right, now what happens if the image is not valid anymore? Let's say that I took this image down. Let's say that this was going to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash oops uh, dot not dot here. Okay, so it's not there. It's not a valid image. Let's go ahead and save that. Take a look at it by doing another refresh. And okay, so we got this red X sometimes or a black X. Sometimes it's a red X. And it just is an indication. Oops, we're missing an image. You guys have probably seen that kind of thing before. But what if I wanted to indicate that there's something that should be here? I can actually use some text to indicate what the image should be that appears here. And we can do that by adding another attribute. It's called the alt attribute. It's kind of an alternative text in case the image is missing. Now I'm just gonna put in here, Steve's ugly mug goes here. All right, save that. Once again, refresh. And we still get the black X, but now we have this little note here that indicates what the image should be that goes there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, fix this image because I want to see my face again. I'm just going to grab that URL again that points to my avatar image from GitHub and paste it. All right, save this. And once again, refresh, and there we go. And notice that the text disappears because it's alternate. It's an alternative to having the image appear. So it's not gonna show it anymore. All right, let's go ahead and add something else. I have another uh, little attribute here that I wanna show you. And this attribute is called the title. I'm gonna go ahead and set the title to made you look. All right, let's go ahead and save that go over to our browser and refresh. And, hmm, well, that's interesting. What happened? Nothing really, right? I don't see any changes. Well, if you hover the mouse over the image, ha, made you look, there it is. So we actually get, when we hover the mouse over any element with a title, it will do this little pop-up where it shows us whatever the text is inside of the title. Okay. So that's kind of neat because you can actually put that on any element. You can use the title for just about anything, just like you can also specify a width and a height on just about anything. All right, so there's that. Now there's one more attribute that I wanna show you. And this is digging a little bit deep. It's just kind of projecting a little bit further ahead than where we're actually at, but I thought I'd show you kind of where we're going. 
So on my span, I'm going to add another attribute. This one is called the style, all right? And what we do is in a style, we can specify another set of uh, attributes and values. So we can have things like background color, we can set a border, we can set, in, in our case, I'm gonna do the color. And the color is the text color. So whatever the font color is or text color that I want this to be, I can set it here. And I can do things like violet, wheat, yellow, teal. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with just good old fashioned red. And you'll notice that there's kind of a similarity here between what's going on inside of the quotation marks of a style as to what's going on here between something like a source and a value. It's really just kind of an attribute value. These are often referred to as key value pairs. Here's the key, it's a style, and the value is this string of color red. Here's a key of href, and the value is google.com. Here's a key of source, and here's the value that's pointing to my image, okay? So we have kind of this key value pair, and you'll see this a lot in programming, where there's some sort of uh, identifier or key that helps us identify some sort of thing, and then we're setting the value of that thing to some particular value. In this case, we're gonna set the color of the text inside of our span to red. Let's go ahead and save this. And we'll once again refresh, and now we can see span content goes here. And I can add additional values inside of style by doing a little semicolon here and specifying another one of these little properties. I'm gonna go ahead and say background color. And I'm gonna set this to, let's do something kind of annoying. We'll do yellow. Ugh, that looks ugly, huh? All right, let's go ahead and save that and refresh. And there we go. We have a yellow background with red text. That looks pretty ugly. Now, this is a little precursor to something called cascading style sheets. They help to add style, right? There's the word style. That's where cascading style sheets comes from. It's because it's affecting the style attribute on an element. Now we've just set this manually here, but when we get into CSS later on in this course, you'll see that all it's really doing is affecting this style attribute for particular elements. And this is just kind of a nice little precursor to see how that all works. Special thanks to these members who really helped the channel grow. I really appreciate your help and support. Thank you. Thank you.